D-Star, DMR, System Fusion, or C4FM Wires X, D-Star, DMR, Hotspots, Reflectors, Fan Mail. I say give it away. Repeaters are not being used in my area. Very wasteful. Space Station, who uses it? School students, I'm not impressed. While we're at it, let's give away 222 megahertz. There's a beautiful 220 repeater in my area. Nobody uses it. So this, is, this letter is gold because it's full of topics for videos. Let's talk about something that makes a good point. I've made a lot of videos on D-Star and DMR and hotspots and whatever else for digital amateur radio, right? And I'm, I'm a hobbyist. I enjoy using this stuff. I'm on D-Star and other modes about every day. But there's always people commenting and there's always people concerned. They say, Eric, that's great. You can talk to 30 Charlie Reflector across the United States of the world, but what happens when the internet goes down? Valid point, congratulations, let's talk about it. So what would be better than having a hotspot on my cell phone, which is connected to AT&T Cellular, which is the poorest network available on 95, where I can't get a solid connection and then take a hurricane and go right through the middle of the state on top of that. What do I get? Not a lot of communication across to different reflectors, right? Think about a network that covers the entire state of Florida that's been around for some time, but I just recently got to know the guys that keep it alive and work on it. What a resilient statewide amateur radio network that we have in Florida. It's called SARNET, Statewide Amateur Radio Network. You mention the word UHF to people and they're gonna say, oh yeah, UHF, that's dead, right? Nobody's got UHF anymore. How about the ability to have a hurricane go straight through the middle of the state, knock out cell towers, no power, but then you got South Florida to North Florida and everywhere in between connected on amateur radio, a very resilient, not using fiber, not using VoIP, not using hotspots or modems or networks or phone lines or whatever. We're talking a really solid statewide amateur radio network, the SARNET. Let's talk about SARNET and the next time you're in Florida or tomorrow when you watch this video, maybe you're out on the radio and you check into one of these SARNETs and you might say, wow, that's pretty impressive. Let's check it out. Ham Radio Concepts, the place to come for amateur radio videos. I could probably teach you almost everything just by visiting their website, sarnetfl.com, S-A-R-N-E-T-F-L.com. And I want you to go after the video and read all of this information and click around because there's a lot of stuff to learn. What I'm going to do to sum this up first and then go back is I'm going to click on system maps and go to the mobile radio coverage map here. Now this is going to give me a, a picture here to show you on video of what we're talking about. Take a look at this, the state of Florida, right? What you're looking at is the red lines would be interstates. This would be interstate 10, I-10. And then you have going down this way on the west coast, I-75. On the east coast here, I-95. Uh, this down here would probably be the sawgrass, and going right through the middle of the state is I-4. So the major interstates through the state of Florida. And what you're looking at with the circles are the green circles are the rough estimate of the mobile coverage area of that repeater. If you're a ham, you know. You know Sometimes the repeaters, they, they cover a little farther than expected. Sometimes they don't. And it depends on your power output, your antenna, where you're at, etc. So... If you look at this, the green circles indicate a little star of, of uh, the repeaters here, the little yellow stars, and then the green circle indicating about how that coverage is, or covers. Depends on the height of, on the tower and the gain of the antennas and so on. The black circles indicate where they're proposed to put a SARNET machine, uh, so there may be lack of coverage there. I know this right here is about the area that I most notice uh, in Daytona Beach, where when you go from you know this repeater to this repeater in St. Augustine. It's kind of hard in between. There's really nothing there, but they're working on that. We'll show you that later. So if I were to go from Escambia County at the tip of Florida in the Northwest to almost pretty much Key West, if you had an antenna like I have on my vehicle, I can go right to the end of Key West mile marker one and have communication to this repeater, which looks like it's in Largo. 
If I'm traveling this entire way, I'm pretty much guaranteed to be in the range of a SARNET machine, with the exception of the little black circles here. Now, how this works is it's running on a microwave network. So all of these are connected with microwave links that are like 6 gigahertz with point-to-point -point dishes, and all of them are pretty much in line. So if there's a break, you know, here on I-10, that would disrupt communications from the west to the east, right? But this is microwave, no fiber, no VoIP, no cell phone, no, no telephone lines to cut. And the way this works also is in the state, there is a main, let's call it a hub for those, just so you can understand, uh, a hub, a central point where all of the radio traffic goes, okay? And when somebody keys up here in Escambia County, that's going to relay their traffic to the main hub, and then it's going to broadcast on all of the other repeaters with a voter system. So you keying up here in the keys, you're lighting up every repeater in the state of Florida. Now keep that in mind. That's very important because if I want to talk to somebody with a long rag chew, this is not the place to really do it. I mean, I've been on there and I've talked to some guys and, you know, yeah, it's, you know, it's raining pretty bad here. The weather's pretty serious, blah, blah, blah. But if you're going to talk for an hour, maybe see if this guy is in your area of simplex or on another repeater system because you're lighting up all these repeaters in the area or in the entire state. And those guys who maintain this, they put out a lot of money and time and effort to keep this running. So we don't want to just keep homes up here burning solid so that, you know, every with everybody listening while you're in Dade County. You don't need to light up all these and, and key them up. But in the event of an emergency, the entire state of Florida can keep in contact from one end to the other. That's pretty impressive. As long as towers don't fall over or dishes don't come down or get tweaked 90 degrees, there's going to be communication here. It can't get more resilient than this. I mean, there's no, the, the only other way of doing this, well, I'd have to think about that to make it a more effective way other than microwave communications. So they're always planning on different repeater sites. Um, let's go back here to, uh, to the, the frequency assignment map because everybody's going to wonder, well, hell, how the hell do I know where the frequencies are? Right here. Check this out. Here's another map, and it shows you the towers and the frequencies and the tones. Very important. Program all of these in your radio because maybe you never know where you're going to be in Florida. Maybe you're on a, a disaster relief team and you need, you know, the one up here in uh, Panama City or the one over here in Fort Myers. Who knows? But the one closest to me would be Sebastian here, 444375. The PL is 107.2. So, again, if I go into that Sebastian machine... Every one of these repeaters on this list is going to key up, syndicated, and broadcast my transmission. So I get on there and, you know, throw my call out, see if someone's listening. You don't want to go on here and call CQ. You don't want to go on here and ask for radio checks constantly. These guys who do this know about where the signal goes. However, if somebody asks you or you feel like you're in an area that you shouldn't be hitting a repeater, you could always volunteer a signal report. Hey, I'm going into the Tampa machine. I'm actually in Brooksville, you know, and give them an idea of how it's covering. They may be interested in that, but by no means do we need to get on here and start doing repeater tests and do it. leave that to the professionals. Um, of course, this is an amateur radio network, so you have to be licensed by the FCC with an amateur radio license, only a technician class. You only have to be a tech to use this. Um, there's really no logging. You don't have to log these contacts. You don't have to put them in the QSL log and send them a card and all that. I mean, this is an emergency network, but it's open to anybody licensed to operate. Uh, and anybody can talk about anything, really. Now, there is a statewide bridge for a net. I think it's on Wednesdays. And they tie in all the emergency operation centers together to test communications in the event of an emergency to see and make sure everybody's got their exercised equipment. Okay. Uh, we're going to go back here and go to how it works. Some interesting here. Uh, there's another picture of a microwave dish here. But they're all UHF repeaters. Okay. And they're all connected to microwave, as we said before. The microwave is operated by the Florida Department of Transportation, FDOT. Uh, so that's why that's why it works so well, because the FTOT is behind this, you know, 
Um, and as I said, in general, long, communi- uh, long conversations and rag chews are discouraged. What this means, again, let me explain this because I know my 62,000 followers are going to say, that's stupid. I can't talk to my friend. Of course you could talk to your friend. But a couple things to remember. One, every repeater is getting voted in the state of Florida with your conversation. Do you want everybody talking about what you're talking about or hearing it? Keep in mind. Also, in the event of emergencies, that takes priority. So if there's a statewide emergency or a hurricane or the Florida is on fire, let's keep the emergency communications routed through this network, right? But in the event of no zombies, as I said before, and no disasters, and it's the middle of January, and you just had a nice Christmas, and New Year's was a blast. Sure, get on there, meet somebody. Hey, how you doing? I'm coming in through uh, the Vero or the uh, Stuart Repeater. Nice to meet you. I usually travel here, blah, 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 and you get to know the guys. There are some people on here that are on there constantly, and they know this system to a T. Um, and there's some more details down here about FX1 stations and FB2 stations and how they really work for the nuts and bolts. But the main thing about this, uh, it's all syndicated together, all using microwave, all UHF, all analog. Nobody can tie in Echolink. Nobody can tie in DMR. Nobody can bridge this to a D-Star network and do all that. This is strictly a resilient station or system that will be alive when nothing else works. Okay. And, uh, that's pretty much, I mean, you can get to, from my house with my Yagi and my 9700, I can really hit quite a bit of stations. And on a good day, I could talk from Vero Beach all the way to Tampa and sometimes from Vero Beach all the way to Key Largo. And it just depends on the conditions. That's with a Yagi and a lot of power, but a 75 watts with a, I don't know, 25 dB gain antenna. But it's really designed for the mobile people, the mobile network, uh, the mobile people that are traveling like myself that go up and down the state. I'm always in range of a Sarnet repeater. Let's go to system status for a second because this will tell you the operational status. I think pretty up to date. Um, normally, these guys that work on this, when there's an outage or a repeater goes down, they usually got it taken care of within days. Um, no need to uh, set off a flare and do smoke signals when a repeater is not working. And before you report a repeater not working, double check your station. It's just unfortunate. When you look like a fool because you had the wrong offset or the wrong tone. All the tones are different, but all the offsets on UHF are 5 megahertz. So get the frequency programmed in, get the right tone in, and verify with someone else before you report it that it's not operational. So this right here, Ormond Beach, right? This is the Daytona Beach area that I was telling you about. Um, there's, They say a tower site selected, but they haven't coordinated their frequency yet. Okay, but mostly everything here is operational. We're going to go back to home here because they have a little blurb here that um, shout out for repeaters. They're looking for repeaters in the Daytona area uh, to fill in that gap, you know. So if you read this, it'll tell you about it that, um, you know, they're, they're planning to have something there, but maybe they're looking for other repeaters that meet these criteria right here to provide for the SARNET system. Um, SARNET was started... By, let's see, let's read this again here. Improving its own voice radio network and to meet its mandate to provide interoperable communications with other state agencies and public safety entities. It was started for a good reason. It wasn't started for someone to say, hey, I got an idea, man. I got an idea. Let's make everybody hear what we're talking about. No, it's more than that. They they use it for, you know, uh, research and investigation. Could this be a viable source when everything fails? Sure, and let's test that when we get Hurricane Michael or Hurricane Irma or wherever. Um, as I said down here, is, Sar- is Sarnet only for emergency communications? No, it's open, but you got to make sure, do a couple things. Listen and heed my words. Just respect others on there. There's people on here that have been here for years. Don't get on there and act like a professional. Uh, this is a little more tight-knit than, than uh, 30 Charlie or a PAPA system for DMR in California. This is a lot of people, they're very nice, they're very open, but we don't need to get on there and start telling them that you're better than them and, and doing all this kind of stuff. You know, normal etiquette. Uh, it's, pub- it's, it's really designed for public safety communications, but we use it as a hobby. It's an amateur radio hobby. We're all amateurs here. Nobody's a professional, but just if my rule of thumb is if you don't know, listen with two ears and one mouth. Listen twice as much as you talk. Two ears, one mouth. That'll make you a better operator when you listen for a while to see what others are talking about 
on this network and then you'll have a little better idea um, but that doesn't mean you copy what they're doing because sometimes we have a poor operator or two get on here and just aggravates me so anyways uh, there's also a frequently asked questions here it tells you all kinds of stuff and a contact if you want to send them an email or ask them any questions hopefully this video answered a lot of the questions you have and maybe I hear you on Sarnet uh, Maybe you're coming down from wherever and you want to check it out when you're visiting. By all means, you know, utilize it. Just get a little knowledge before you jump on something like this. So I hope it was a little informative video. Remember what I tell everybody. Don't ever forget analog. There's a bunch of people that are getting their license. They get a $35 Bofung. The power just went out in my house. And <laughs> if you saw that. And uh, they're going on analog and nobody's there. Why? Because we're all on D-Star, we're all on DMR, we're all on Moto Turbo, we're all on P25, we're using hotspots, but that guy that's got that Bofung or even a Kenwood D74, he's a tech, he's got an ana uh, analog and digital radio, but there's never anybody on analog. Remember, analog is not dead. This is a prime example of what I've said over the last five years, keep analog alive. And sometimes analog just sounds a little bit better than digital when you're talking about when you get to that fringe area and an R2D2 and packet loss. You know, something like this system here really connects an entire state with a microwave network using no fiber or anything. And just keep in mind if you hear me out there, let's not bring that on the Sarnet, talk about my videos. And I'm just another one of you guys. I'm not a celebrity. YouTube is great. I'm glad you're in liking the videos. Just keep it away and Remember, you're keying up the entire state of Florida. People in the panhandle in Miami don't want to hear about my videos. Thanks, but hey, I appreciate everybody watching. 7-3. KJ4, YZI.